I, I recently uh, re received representation from the staff at uh, Drogheda Community Training Centre uh, following a letter that they received on Friday regarding the withdrawal of funds by Solace from May 2015. This news came as a shock to the staff in the, st in the training centre and they were unfortunately given no reason as to why the funding would be withdrawn next year. The chairperson of Drogheda CTC received this letter, as I said, on the 8th of May, which, um, if I may just refer to it, uh, it says in, in, uh, in accordance with clause 25.1 of the agreement, we hereby notify you of our intention to terminate the agreement. Uh, this clause provides that uh, any such notice must be given not less than 12 months in advance of such termination. Accordingly, uh, unless terminated earlier pursuant to clause 25.2, the agreement shall terminate on the 8th of May 2015. Um, so as you can see, there was no actual reason given. Uh, community training centres in partnership with Solis provide important training for early school leavers and have a strong presence in the local community. These training centres provide an avenue for young people to achieve personal and work-related skills. The foundation this training centre provides has enabled thousands of young people to achieve goals that might otherwise not have been possible. In speaking with staff from Drogheda CTC, I can attest to the passion and commitment that they have for work. And Minister, I can tell you they are devastated by the news. The Drogheda CTC have provided an excellent service for 30 years, and I sincerely hope that we can find some way in which this can continue. Uh, Minister, I know you are well aware of the importance of these centres and the links that they provide in the training process, so I, I would ask you that you would address this situation immediately as this will have a very negative impact on the local community and, most importantly, I feel, on early school leavers. Thank you. Very thank you, Gramagia. And I want to thank uh, Senator Moran for raising this matter on the adjournment. And I'm sure, as everybody is aware, uh, there are very significant reforms ongoing throughout every level of the Irish education system at present, particularly in the whole area of further education and training, and indeed in higher education also. And we're slowly but surely moving towards a closer alignment to the labour market uh, based on evidence from all relevant stakeholders including employers, learners, the unemployed and international best practice. And just two days ago, Minister Quinn and I launched uh, Ireland's first ever further education and training strategy and set out exactly the route for all learners, irrespective of their existing skills, skill set and their existing levels of attainment, to be able to access a very high quality and very meaningful uh, further education and training opportunity. And the aims of these reforms can be summarised as follows, to support that inclusion and diversity, to improving quality and accountability, something we should all strive for, and also for creating opportunities for our learners and uh, people, our trainees, to go on to a particularly uh, another echelon, another uh, level of education, or perhaps into the world of work. So it's my department's objective and ambition to create a strong, a relevant and coordinated further education and training sector through structural change which involved a number of reforms and central to that reform has been the creation of SOLIS, our new further education and training authority which is tasked with the coordinating and a funding role and the education and training boards which are tasked with the delivery of further education and training services. We now have our 33 VECs amalgamated into 16 local education and training boards each with the scale, the capacity uh, to improve the opportunities offered to those out of work. And by, Ju by July the 1st, the former, uh, all of the former force training sectors will have transferred over to the ETBs and will be the, the training that takes place within those centres will be done under the auspices of the each ETB. Solace was tasked with preparing a five-year strategy, and as I say, uh, we just published that just this week. The strategy was devised through a very exemplary consultation process, which involved, again, seeking uh, and listening to the views of everybody involved in the sector, from learners to government, from employers to trade unions, um, and Solace submitted the FET strategy to Minister Quinn, and as I say, it was officially launched just this week. So Solace is tasked with achieving the very, very best possible outcomes for our learners, uh, equally so value for money for the taxpayer, and it always and will always strive to uh, ensure appropriate standards of corporate governance by training providers. So I understand that following a review of learning outcomes and a cost-benefit analysis, uh, the Solis Training Northeast has decided to discontinue funding for Drogheda CTC from May of next year. I'm informed that current learners will be supported to complete their existing programs and individual learning plans will be agreed and supervised by Solis and DCTC to ensure continuity of that service delivery. And early school leavers, uh, 
which were the, the, the main cohort serviced by the uh, CTC, who would normally have been referred to the CTC, will receive priority referral to access other suitable training programmes in the Drogheda area. And it's in the intention that over the next 12 months, the Loud Mead Education and Training Board, including Solace Training North East, will engage with all relevant stakeholders with a view to a further enhancing provision for early school leavers in the Drogheda area. And Solace and I would like to thank the staff and the Board of Management of the Drogheda CTC uh, for their service and professionalism in dealing with these matters. Thank you, Question, uh, uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, so, if, if I'm uh, to understand correctly from this, it's, it's uh, following the review of the learning outcomes and cost cost uh, benefit analysis. This is this is why they're, they're this is why they're being moved. Um, so, all of the students, if I could just ask, uh, uh, that, that are that are there, the trainees that are there, will be moved. That's, that's a guarantee, or they will finish their courses there, those of them that are there. No student disadvantaged in any way that, that by will, this code. No. Okay. And, and, and they will have the same access to the same courses and the same, exact same courses. And can I just ask you, Minister, about the staff? What will, what will happen to the staff that are in, in Drogheda Training Centre at the moment? I'm not aware of, of, of the arrangement that will be made for the staff, but certainly I will um, in, uh, speak to Solace and speak to the uh, local ETB and, and provide that information for you. In, in, that's in brilliant. The, if you, if you get back to me, yes, that's great. Thank you. Thank you, Minister. House stands adjourned until 10:30 tomorrow morning.